Hi everybody, so this is going to be a really quick tutorial on the other way of making a pattern swatch. We've been through one way which there's already a tutorial for, uh, which is about using the object pattern make. This is a slightly different way and this is the way that you would make a pattern if you're creating a tile, maybe a JPEG or a PNG that you'd be sending off um, to be used in manufacturing. So it's a different way of making one and also really valid to know. So I'm starting off with a 200 by 200 artboard. You can either make that when you're creating it under File, New, or if you already have an artboard and you'd like to edit it, you can go to your Artboards panel, double click here, and you can change the dimensions. Now you could do any set square. You could make it 400 by 400. The key is you want to make it something straightforward that you remember because you're going to be moving objects across the artboard to copy and replicate them. Okay, so I'm just gonna zoom in here. Now I'm gonna make a really simple one today. You could make it more complex, but I just advise you start off with something quite simple. And I'm gonna start off with an ellipse. I'm gonna make a sort of a polka dot pattern on here today. So I'm just creating one ellipse and I'll give it a color. I'm gonna take away the stroke from this one. Let's just make it this purple. I'll make a purple and pink polka dot pattern. Now the key here to remember is anything that goes off the top of your artboard or off the side of your artboard needs to be replicated in the opposite side. So for example, anything that is here needs to feature here and here. Anything that features on this side will need to be replicated here and also down here because it all doubles up. Now the way we can do that is a great technique where we select the object that we want to move and also copy at the same time. I'm going to right mouse button click and go to transform, move, and it will bring up this little panel here for us. This is really handy because we can choose the position it's going to go and we can copy at the same time. So we're going to select our preview one. I always like to have that on. I think it just makes it really clear and handy. Now we don't want to move it um, vertically at the moment. We just want to move it horizontally first. So I'm going to type in 200 and you can see here it's giving me a preview that it's moving my object over here. Now the important step here is not to just go OK because that's only going to move your object. It's not going to copy and move it at the same time. So what I want to do is hit copy. And now you can see here I have my first object, my second object, and they're actually in exactly 200 millimeters apart from each other. And why did I pick 200 millimeters? Because my artboard is 200 millimeters. Fantastic. So now I would like to copy this object and I can copy this one at the same time if I hold down shift and have them both selected. I want to copy and move them at the same time down to this bottom section of my tile or my artboard. So again, with them selected, I'm going to right mouse button click, go to transform, move, bring up this panel. Again, I like to have a preview. This time I'm not moving it horizontally, I'm moving it, moving it vertically. And I'll type in 200. And you can see here it's previewing where it is moving these objects to. Fantastic. And again, I don't want to hit copy. Uh, sorry, I don't want to hit OK because it's just going to move them. I want to hit copy. And now I have four instances of the same object exactly 200 millimeters apart. Fantastic. Now for this, I'm also going to copy some polka dots just into the center. Now anything that's in the center, I can put them wherever I like. It's only if they overlap the edge that I need to make sure that they're replicated on the other side. Fantastic. So this is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. It's just going to maybe, you know, you'd want to go in and you could change a bit of the sizes of things. Uh, maybe, you know, I might just for interest, I uh, will make a couple of other circles here and I'll change their color to something else. And you can make whatever you like. The key here to know is anything that overlaps the edge, you need to replicate on the other edges exactly 200 or exactly the dimensions of your artboard. If it's out, it'll mean that you'll end up with an odd strip or things won't line up and it won't be a repeating pattern. So that's why we do that. Okay, the last, uh, one of the last steps, not the last step, but one of the last steps is to create a clipping mask. So I'm going to hold down my tool here and get a rectangle. 
I'm going to click once on my artboard and again I'd like to make it the same size as my artboard so I'm going to type in 200 by 200 because I know that's how big my artboard is. I'm going to lay that over the top of my artboard and anything underneath is going to be clipped to this shape. So I will remove, I'll just zero that out so you can see what I'm doing. I have my vector shape, I have my pattern underneath I'm creating. I need to select all of it at once. And as you can remember from a previous tutorial, the way to create clipping masks is to have a shape on top and that's what everything will clip to. All right, right mouse button click to make clipping mask. Fantastic. So now I have my tile, but again, there is another step um, if I want to just make sure this pattern is working. This is perfectly adequate to finish on if I was sending this straight off to, for, uh, off to print. But for the tutorial we're working on, it's really great to also set this up as a swatch. There's one more step we need to do for that, and that is to merge it. So we want to make sure that anything that's sitting outside, even though we, we're using clipping mask, these vectors are still outside here which means if we make it into a pattern swatch now it's going to use those as gaps um, so we don't want that we want to use our pathfinder it's under pathfinder or you can find under window pathfinder once you hit this one merge and all that's going to do is just really flatten um, what we've got happening there and just make it um, a bit easier to work with as a pattern swatch uh, now i might even while i'm here i'm just going to delete all of these we don't need any of those. Yes, I'm going to delete all those swatches. And here's my pattern swatch. So it's as easy as this. I can click and drag it into my swatches panel. And I now have this um, swatch here. And I can test it. I'm just going to click and drag myself out of shape. And I'm going to add the pattern to it. And fantastic. And you can come in here and you see, if we zoom in, that pattern is seamless. We've done a great job. And we've created our own custom pattern. Now this one's quite simple. Uh, you can play with this technique and try all sorts of things and get really complicated. The one step that's in there that I didn't mention that might you might come across is if you won't use any line work in here, you will need to outline it before you merge it. The reason for that is lines will disappear in the merge. And the way to do that, I'll just demonstrate. If you're creating a stroke, we'll just add um, a color to this stroke so you can see it. Okay, for the sake of just um, experimenting and showing you. Okay, so let's say I have this pattern and it's got lines, these lines as well as the shapes. If I want to include these lines, I'll need to go up to Object, Path, Outline Stroke. And all that's going to do is it changes it from a vector line to a vector shape. And it will keep our consistent um, stroke that we've created, but as a shape instead of just a line vector with a stroke applied. Thanks for watching. I hope that's been really helpful um, and you enjoyed the tutorial.